Hi guys and welcome back to the Screengrass about the Susan um, competition. Today I want to tell you how we get this 2D surface uh, of Susan's head, so the projected area into this plane here. And the first thing is we have to join these two parts which we, which we uh, split the last time. So I just want to show you what I mean. So the last time we selected some some faces here on the ears and we get like <clears throat> we get like two parts to join these you select both or you make just a here and control j and then they get joined again and you have one object okay so to start um i will save this now to start uh, it's very simple how to get this 2d surface area um, but first of all I want to mention that there is something very important you see uh, right now that this object has here this center position and if you go to the edit mode while deselecting everything you still see the center position if you select everything you see the center position again so both if you shift now both should be at the same position but it can happen that um, for example, in your case, it's like, uh, how can I shift this, grab it, so that it is like this, not so extreme, but now you see that these two positions are not in the same position, and for that you have to take care that both are in the same position, so could, uh, shift S as before, cursor to center, and then selection to cursor, which is off offset. So, and now we have both again in the same same position. Um, the method I want to show you was mentioned by a guy who is acting on the Blender Police Forum, which is a German Blender forum, like the CFD one. So, thank you for for the for the help and. Um, it's nice that there is a similar forum which which helps people who are not so um, uh, familiar and advanced in Blender. Okay, so what he suggested was we go to the edit mode, we select everything, and then we scale our Susan into the Y direction with a factor of zero. So what happened to Susan then? She get shrinked, and we get this guy, a 2D projection of Susan. Actually, it's not a projection, but this 2D uh, Susan guy. Mm, the reason why Susan get shrinked was, uh, in fact, that she was not eating any banana the last days. And yeah, to, to now the 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 thing is that we need this white. Uh, orange, this orange curve here. The problem is that based on the fact that we just put all the faces, uh, let's say the coordinates of all points, um, we put to y0, everything is overlapping now. But there is a nice idea behind how to get now this outer surface and this is simply doing a fit. We make a new circle so the circle is aligned now in xy direction, but we need the um, xz direction. So what we do is we activate align to view and we get this. So enter and done. So now we have the circle. We go back into edit mode and we, we scale with S, but nothing happened. This is based on the fact that we selected faces, but actually there is no face. So you can either select edges or the points and scale it and make it bigger that the circle encloses our um, domain so and then you can put the points closer to Susan's head however I want to make a simplification I want to I will select half of the points, I will remove them, I add a modifier, 
So I select all points, add the modifier a mirror. And what the mirror is just doing is just mirroring the points. However, now you see what what is the outcome. The outcome is that I don't have to, to do it on both sides. How accurate you make this fit is, is up to you. It does not have to be too accurate. I will make this loop twice and uh, you see why. So that's the reason why I don't make it too too accurate here. Okay, so this is done. Then we have to apply our modifier, so the mirror modifier, which will not work now because we are in the edit mode and it will also give you the, the message report or the error report. So we go to to the object mode, we apply it, we go back to the edit mode, we close these gaps, we select the points and press uh, well, and then pressing F. So now we select all the points and then we say a new modifier which is shrink rob and the target is Susan. So we shrink these points to Susan. And if you activate this symbol here, you will see how it will look like. So you see at this point are moved to this outer point. However, this is now actually not so good because you see that uh, the, the points here are two cores. So what we do, we subdivide them and we subdivide them again. So you see it's getting more smoother and yeah, that's it. So now you can apply it <coughs> um, in the object mode, you can apply it or use you work a bit or may, make some fine tuning in the edit mode. So now you see that for example, this point would be better to have it here. And then we will get like this. You can also keep it as it is. Like this. And then I will just apply the filter now or the modifier. So now the first map is done. Then we can go back to the uh, to the edit mode. We can select these faces or these edges. We can subdivide it and subdivide it. And then we can move the points closer to what we want to have. And then again, select all the points, add the modifier, the Susan is the target, and this would be the outcome. Again, we have to go to the object mode. And then uh, if we deselect Susan, we will get this wonderful mapped outer line, which is almost the same than Susan said. If you are not happy with that, you can now split this, this line again or this line to fit it a bit more. But actually, it, it is just a demonstration how you can do that. Okay, so now we need the face inside here. So edit mode again and select everything and just press F. That's it. Now the question is how big is this area? And I want to show you three options. So the first one is um, the easiest and maybe understandable, most understandable. No, the easiest, it, it is not the easiest, but if you are working with body view, it's very easy and simple. So what we do, we um, extract, we extract this STL file, Susan to DSTL, and we start. We start Paraview, and I think you know what I'm going to do. I will open our Susan, which is now here 2D. 
So this is our 2D Susan area. You see now also that it is triangulated. And if you say integrated variables, apply this, you go to cell data, then you see the area of 2.562 square meters. Okay, this is the first one. The same can be done in Blender while pressing N, selecting the face here, go down, go down, and then face info, and then you will see the face number here, which is actually uh, not really readable. It has to be 2. Point, can you read it? 2.50, 2.56. I'm not sure why I cannot read it right now. The, there should be an option. Okay, I will just make it 2.5, 2.562 which is in correlation to this one. And the third option I know is to use this 3D printing. However, this is somehow wrong. So if you don't have this, uh, this tab here, you have to go to um, this user preferences, and then you have to search for 3D and activate this print toolbox. If you do so, you get this one, and then you can click on area and the area would be 3.769 square meters. So as you see, this is not, not the value we have here, nor here. So this value is somehow wrong. Um, but I think it, it, maybe it's some 3D stuff, uh, I don't know. But I just wanted to make you aware that there's also some option. Actually, I don't know what it is, um, but these two options are nice. So the next thing is that we need um, uh, for our drag coefficient calculation, I will show you. We need um, the projected area and a reference length um, in order to enable the calculation. So here, this is a function. Um, the function type is force coefs, which will calculate our CD drag coefficient and lift coefficient and other stuff. And for that, we need to have the center of rotation, the lift direction, the drag direction, the pitch axis, the magnitude, so the velocity from in the file field. We need the density of our fluid and we need a refer reference length and the reference area. Actually, the reference area uh, is always the projected area. So if you have a sphere which, um, or a cylinder, uh, which will be um, there, which is an obstacle in the flow, I'll just show it to you. One moment. Yeah, um, for example, like this. So the flow is coming from the front and the uh, projected area or the reference area is like a square. So if you project this cylinder onto this wall here, it will be a line in 2D. In 3D, it will be a square with the the height of the heights of the cylinder here and for a sphere it would be a circle. Okay, and in our case it is this projected area. But the question is now what is the, the reference length we have to set here and in general for a sphere, um, for a sphere or a cylinder it would be the diameter and in our case, so what you can do is that you approximate this with a sphere. 
or maybe more reli reliable is to use the hydraulic diameter which is the hydraulic is four times the area divided by the outer divided by the length of the outer edges so how can we get this uh, it's very simple too in blender so what you just do is you select the face and you remove only the face so then we have only the lines so we select all the lines and then Um, we cannot see anything. Length, yeah, the lengths here, but uh, yeah, the, as you can see, the problem is that we get the length of each one and not the sum. I think there is like a calculator which will tell us the sum, um, but I don't know it right now. So I do it in Blender now, uh, in part of you. So removing this integrated filter and applying some feature where is our feature feature edge and then I apply it and what I get is like this auto curvature and then again I just apply the integrated variable filter I don't know why part of you now crashed Actually, is always working. Uh, this, this screencast takes already too long. I wanted to shorten that. So integrate it. And then if you go to cell data, you see the length is 8.04 meters. So, and then you can put this into this one. And then you get will get this hydraulic diameter, which I will use in my calculation. So we said that the area was two point five six. However, we will scale it by a factor of 0.1. So we divide the area by 100. So it's 0 0.02562. 0 0.02562. Was it correct? 2562, yeah. And then we have it here, 0, 2, 5, 6, 2. and the length was, so now we have to scale this guy down and then calculate the length again. And that's how I built these two quantities. In the next screencast I will uh, talk about how to mesh our, or first to make the background mesh, and then um, I will show you how I made the mesh and the setup in my case, which will be in the second uh, and the following subsequent screencast. Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon and take care. Bye, guys.